To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother, who share with you in Jesus the persecution and the kingdom and the patient endurance, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God made the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, saying, Write in a book what you see, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamon, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white as white wool, white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined as in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And this face was like the sun shining with full force. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, and the living one. I was dead, and see, I am alive forever and ever, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. Here ends the first lesson.
all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Wherever they do not welcome you, as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They departed and went through the villages, bringing them good news and curing diseases everywhere. Here ends the second lesson. <laughs>
I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Creator of, of heaven and, and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only, only Son, Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended, he descended to, the to the dead. dead. On the On third the day he rose again. He ascended, he ascended into heaven. He is seated, seated at the right hand, hand of the Father. He will and come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're now going to hear the anthem.
global pandemic has made 2020 something of a year to forget. What are we to make of the age we live in? Perhaps you're filled with youthful optimism. I aspire to be that way, but sometimes feel the transition to grumpy old man. Things not like they were in the good old days. Charles Dickens considered that his era, the mid-19th century, was repeating the conditions around the 1775 French Revolution. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity, it was the season of light, it was the season of darkness. Perhaps every age is a mixture of opportunities and threats. Our first reading came from the beginning of the final book of the New Testament, the book of Revelation, also known as the Apocalypse of John. The form of this book is a letter written, as we heard, to the seven churches in Asia, all located in what is now modern Turkey. The book is also prophetic and uses wild and wonderful imagery to describe the vision of John of Patmos toward the end of the first century. It is a revealing or unveiling, which in Greek is an apocalypse. John's letter came to define a whole genre of Judeo-Christian literature, apocalyptic, which covered works from centuries before and after John's vision. These writings shared the themes of a prophetic vision of the end of the age delivered by a heavenly messenger. They also share a certain pessimism about their present age, which is viewed as imminently passing away with accompanying times of trial and tribulation. After a notably Trinitarian opening, the Apocalypse of John exhorts us to expect the second coming of Jesus in end-time judgment. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him. The description that follows of one like the Son of Man is a vision of might, glory, and power, quite unlike Victorian caricatures of a meek and mild, blonde-haired, lamb praying Jesus. During my teaching days, a colleague in the staff room had a mug which said, Jesus is coming, look busy. The early church understood, however, that the second coming, along with God's judgment of history, was not something you could avoid by looking the other way. This moment would be irresistible in that it cannot be resisted, and it would bring an end to all history. But the timing, expectation of an imminent return of Jesus has been hard to sustain over the course of 2,000 years. While some Christians continue to expect an imminent apocalypse, others interpret future expectations as referring to socio-political events now past, others to events over a broad sweep of history, and still others not to events but to spiritual truths. It seems to me that the first verse of the book of Revelation, which describes the book as a revelation of what must soon take place, reflects the genuine but misplaced expectation of some early followers of Jesus that the world would imminently come to an end. It wasn't until the 19th century that humanity has been aware of the concept of extinction of species, and not until the shameful dropping of atomic weapons on Nagasaki and Hiroshima that there has been a general sense of humanity's own existential threat to itself. Dr. Anders Sandberg, senior research fellow at Oxford's Future of Humanity Institute lists existential threats from nuclear war, bioengineered pandemics, superintelligence, and nanotechnology, as well as the unknown unknowns. Ecological collapse and climate crisis are also great threats to life, although Dr. Sandberg cheerily notes that in comparison to those mentioned, these are unlikely to make the entire planet uninhabitable. What comfort then from our readings? Before we all have nightmares. The vision of John of Patmos contains some deep spiritual truths. Our reading ended with the words of Jesus in John's vision, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, and the living one. I was dead, and see, I am alive forever and ever, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. Firstly, Jesus says, Do not be afraid, because he has the keys of death and Hades. This is to say that death has been defeated, and there is life everlasting for all in Jesus. 
He no longer needs to live under the fear of death. The second comfort is that Jesus is the first and the last, echoing the words God spoke earlier in the meeting, and the Alpha and the Omega, who is and who was and who is to come. God spans all history, which does not proceed apart from his upholding and directing. There are no unknown unknowns for God, who is at the beginning and end of all our time. He has the whole world and the whole of history in his hands. As well as bookending history, Jesus is the centre of history. In Jesus, God has revealed that he is with us and for us. That he forgives us and gives us new life in the present and a hopeful future. So may we live in faith and not in fear, trusting that God is with us and for us, and that nothing in all history can separate us from the love of God. Amen. still ourselves as we bring our hopes, our needs, and our thanks before God our Father in prayer. Lord of grace, we give you thanks for the abundance of your gifts to us, for the love of our families and friends, for the food on our tables, for a warm bed to sleep in, and for our individual skills and talents. We pray for those who are unloved, those who are hungry, those who are homeless, or those who feel that they have no purpose. Lord, as you share your abundance with us, help us to share our abundance with others, especially those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, who provides us, we pray for strength, patience, and self-discipline as we endure the lockdown. We pray for those who are suffering from COVID-19, and for those who are treating them in our spirit. We pray for those whose employment and businesses are at risk. We give you thanks for the progress in developing a vaccine and pray for your blessing for those who are working hard to complete its development, production, and distribution. Lord, help us not to lose hope and help us to support each other selflessly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, light, and love. As the night story and the pressures from study and the pandemic press in on our college community, help us to bring rays of light to those around us. Help us to smile even when it feels hard. Help us to reach out to others even when we want to be alone. Help us to help those in need even if we ourselves are in need. And help us to love even when we feel unloved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of peace, we pray for the end of conflict. We pray for reconciliation and the unity that you intend for your world. We especially pray for an end to the conflict in Ethiopia and the ceasefire in Borno Karabakh for world. We pray for a peaceful transition of power in the United States and a positive outcome to negotiations between the United Kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of compassion, we bring before you those who are suffering, body, mind, or spirit in our community. In a moment of silent prayer, we bring before you those known to us who need your healing love, especially at this time. Surround them with your healing love and give them courage, strength, and hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help us to walk with you in faith, hope, and love this coming year, inspired by the example of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and filled with the energy and the peace of your Holy Spirit, which moves in us, through us, and around us. Conclude with the college for today, the second Sunday before Advent. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs to eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as He is pure. 
when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Amen. Peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.